Welcome to Coffee Bar Stories, a small town comedy and DTZ entertainment presentation, hosted by Dad and Son. Welcome back to the Coffee Bar. This is episode three, and tonight's story is DJ Douchebag, a self centered, narcissistical douchebag that likes to be a DJ. We're going to take it off to Dad, and he's going to tell us all about him. Thank you, son. All right, well, uh, this is a, a guy that uh, a friend of mine and we know that, uh, well, we I don't really I don't really know the guy that well, or didn't at the time, now I do, but at the time I really didn't know him that well, and, and a buddy of mine kind of introduced me to him, and he's like, man, he's starting a DJ business and everything, and I was like, oh, okay, you know, so goes to bars, you know, and I said, karaoke DJ, right? And he goes, yeah, yeah, you know, so we, I'm like, all right, we'll go, you know, and the dude I really haven't known yet, we go to, well, I guess, one of his first gigs, I guess is what it is, basically, the way my buddy explained it. Yeah. And uh, when we go to it, we go there to have a good time and to see him and support him and everything. And he's DJing in the beginning, you know, hey, this is such and such DJ, you know. It's we'll go with DJ douchebag, you know, welcome to the yeah such and such bar. And and stuff. Yeah, all right, you know. And the place kinda had power drinkers in there, but you could tell there's, you know, quite a few people that like to do dr- drugs and stuff like that also. Yeah. So, you know, it, this place was uh in a not a bad area. It just drew it just that drew type in of people, bad I guess. Customers, yeah, kind of. you know. I well, guess it was I mean, known for it, what, like a club, nightclub type deal. No, no, it was no, it was like a bar. It had like a, a game uh pool room on the Okay. On the other side of a wall. So that's where he was at where people would go and dance and whatnot. I mean, their side had a had the where the bar people would be sitting, sitting, oh, but they right. could still see the DJ and listen to the music because it would come around the wall. But the he he the you know as we're in there with it, he's all you know sober still and starting out. Yeah, you know, because he liked to party, man. He liked to party hardy. So I'm you know, and in a way, I kind of with with my buddy, we kind of I was like. I looked at him and stuff, and I said, you know, you think he's going to end up, you know, pull this off without getting hammered or something stupid going on? And my buddy's like, oh, no, it should be all right, man. Yeah, you know, and I could tell he's trying to be a friend to his friend. Yeah, but at like but, the same but, time, but he's he, fed up with the shit. But, no, he's not. He's He's already, like, I, you know... Not giving me full confidence that no, nothing's gonna pop off. Yeah, <laughs> so he's like, eh. you, know, you know, but I being, going to bars, I already, you know, in in the area, I already know you got to expect a Yahoo here and there. That that that's nothing. But we kind of way it looked, I was like, okay, you know. So he's doing his DJ thing in the first hour, and shit goes by. And he's all right and stuff, and he comes over, and he, well, he's got, like, this uh, long, uh, I forget what it was, some real long song somebody requested on. It was like a seven-minute song or some shit. <laughs> he, so he comes over by us, and shit, because we stayed in the pool, in the area he's actually DJing in. Yeah. And uh, he, he tells my buddy, you know, hey, man, I, I get free drinks and shit, and stuff you know hey if you dj i'll give you get you free beers you know blah 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 and stuff and help me dj you know because when i gotta go to back kind of the way he the way he started out playing it was like hey man kind of fill in when i'm gotta go off to the bathroom like he's trying to keep everything yeah rolling. like be like yo rolling every time i go when, to the when, bathroom fill yeah. in anytime i need to go do something real quick just fill in real quick yeah and it, you ain't gonna take care of everything that way just let me go do something and then i'll come right back yeah, and he stressed and then, about how he'd had to go get the beer, though. Yeah. You know, I mean, that was the thing because it's free beer for him. Yeah. Unlimited free beer. It's the way he had played it off or whatever it was. And I'm like, man, I'm looking at my buddy going, oh, 
thinking i'm just thinking myself i ain't saying a word to him because that's his friend i don't know the guy that well you gotta understand this so me to be just evasive and talk trash on the guy of what i'm thinking at the moment it's not cool i don't want to yeah. all of a sudden you know the, my friend i'm with going hey man i don't think you need to be here then you gotta go yeah. if you don't want to you know just trying just, to play the field at this point yeah right? Playing all the sides. Exactly. Just keeping your mouth shut, keeping any opinions to yourself until you know really what you're able to say and what you're not. I know what you mean. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. He goes off to get the beer. My buddy goes and mans the DJ station. The song ends, so he just throws it into another song and yeah. stuff. And uh, the guy ain't back yet, and the song's playing, and somebody comes up and asks to request a uh, first song, uh, requested a song, but to be... Uh, given out you know they wanted hey the song's for such and such yeah and he's like all right uh yeah when the dj comes back she's like well he's you know you know got all frantic about it oh please please he's like okay all right so he gets the thing set up to where he can click on the microphone and make this and make the announcement, announcement and play, play the song, song for the yeah. girl you know like she's asking for because he's not back oh, so God. and he can't and my buddy can't see the guy the de the douchebag he can't see the douchebag dj that's fucking up at the bar because he's he's down towards the far end so where the wall's coming up you can only s where it stops to let you walk through yeah you can only see maybe 10 feet of the bar down you're not getting to see you very far down of people sitting at the bar okay he's farther down where it'd be blocked off from view where his dj where the dj booth set up at the far in, other end where you'd walk in on the bar side to enter the place right. so he's like that you know playing outward oh my god and so the but my buddy does it he he goes ahead and he hits the disc and he starts announcing you know the thing and all this and that and uh he does a really good job you know yeah but he also makes music you know he knows what he's doing with this stuff he just you know he's he just not, didn't expect to be you know djing yeah, that yeah, night when yeah. he came to party at a bar exactly so what he did he did it played the lady's song and something she was all happy waving to him thank yeah. him as she was dancing around and all the crazy shit and stuff and i look over at my buddy you know because i'm just staying i'm not over with him at the dj booth i'm yeah, staying just at off the at table the man in the table still mm -hmm. and his beer that we had together you know it's still sitting at the table mm -hmm. and so because we'd bought a pitcher it was like five dollar pitcher night or something there something like that yeah yeah so you know i'm man in the pitcher and watching his glass and next thing i know he's like kind of like pointing like go to the bar yeah you know go find this yeah and, and i'm like go look, you know he's like go look for the dude so i went on as he's you know getting ready to switch a song from the girl's song on to another song because it's about to end yeah He's like, what in the hell, you know? He's got people now coming up requesting to, to do the uh, karaoke. Yeah. And stuff. He's like, man, I don't know about this karaoke shit. What am I supposed to do? Because he didn't know how this guy, he may have a, what well, he does karaoke. Yeah. So he's trying not to screw his, his buddy over. Mm -hmm. So I go over. He's over there in the bar. He must be on his third or fourth beer by now. At that point, screw he's the buddy over. Because he had a bunch of them sitting there just slamming him. Just slamming him back and forth? Yeah. And, uh, God damn. I, and I'm like, hey, dude, he, you know, he's waiting over there. You you know, they got karaoke people that request karaoke. And can't get shitty, like, why the fuck are you bothering me type deal? And, and I'm like, man, you know, he's wanting to know... He, what to do about karaoke people he don't know what's going on with this you know and stuff and so the dude finally yeah you know he gets up all in a huff uh -huh. walks off and and i'm like man he's kind of fucking shitty when this is his his thing this yeah. is this is his thing this isn't me asking him hey you know my buddy's like like my buddy just this is his first gig and he yeah. showed up to help him out by giving him advice or if he's got yeah, a no. question you know this is yours not his mm -hmm. and he goes over there finally and he takes over and starts this little karaoke thing and he and uh then a waitress must have showed up maybe they didn't have one time or she didn't start to a certain time but all of a sudden he's getting served by a waitress oh god oh my god he went from beers to 
Jaeger bombs, I oh, think they're called. No. Ja- yeah, Jaeger bombs, you know. The yeah, Red I know Bull exactly Jaeger what Jaeger bombs are. Okay, he had like two or three of those in a row. Oh, not shit. not just through the evening. This is just what mm-hmm. um, she had gone. She, she had to have been late because she went in and came out like several, several times and ran around and checked on people within the first half hour I seen her. Yeah multiple times so she got him several d- different types of drinks during it and i i couldn't believe it i was like what in the hell is going on here i'm like this is unbelievable that you know yeah how, how much he's drinking and my buddy's not really paying attention he's getting up he's shooting there pool, trying, yeah. doing things you know he's kind of trying to enjoy the bar and this lasts for about 45 minutes half hour i say about an, about an hour at this point the girl's already got everything taken care of and he's doing this. all of a sudden he gets a hold of my buddy again has me go actually gets a hold of me he he flags he's over like, to hey, me go get, go your get buddy. yeah my buddy and i go grab my buddy he goes over to douchebag dj and he you know and he goes tells her i guess bathroom or something so he goes but i notice he ain't going to the bathroom he cuts over to the bar again but it's but maybe 30 seconds and then he's going back and heading backwards towards the bathroom yeah with somebody else and uh these two walk in there and next thing i know about maybe Half hour, 45 minutes or more oh goes God, by. Of course. He comes out. Jaw is just a going to town back and forth. Of course it is. Geeked out. and I'm just like, holy crap. Either two things happened in that bedroom or that bathroom. He got he gave the oh, blowjob of a lifetime no, or he just like, snorted a mile of coke. Yeah, you know. And I was like, oh, Lord, here we go. And he can't even keep a hold of his own... Uh, like well, DJ situation, and he's over here he, just getting trashed and everything. How does the and he expected to get paid for all this? Yeah, oh yeah, he he actually I think when he showed up he got paid. That's some. Bull. I think actually I I think actually the way it worked there is when he when he came in his equipment was set up and everything, then they paid him and shit. Well, they got or they shit may have done it. They may have did it the end of the night. I don't. I don't remember. He may have gotten paid first or at the end. I don't remember. But he, yeah, he had, a, well, what he, when he come over to my friend and shit, all fucking geeked out, he's like, my my buddy's just looking at him like, you're a fucking idiot, mm-hmm. you know, in the face. And didn't say, I know, I didn't see him say anything openly unless he mumbled it. Yeah. But the guy, you could, I heard the guy because I went over there just to make sure my buddy was cool. Mm-hmm. And he's like, He's like, man, the booze is starting to hit me, man. I had to, you know, come down off the, you know, be lifted up from the booze. Yeah. And stuff. And I know people that do that will drop speed or whatever to keep going on, uh, you know, from get out of a, a, a drunkenness. Yeah. And shit. And he's like, oh, yeah, okay, whatever. And then he goes, we go back or he starts finding some more pool and everything like that. And then all of a sudden, I noticed he... He went over and had a long, like another long song, or had maybe put had two song, another second song loaded yeah. up to go next, or something like that. And he came over and said something. My buddy, my buddy, I because I wasn't over there. My buddy just had I couldn't say hear what he was saying, but just shaking his head and this and that. And he walks on into the my buddy goes back shooting pool. And he walks on into the bathroom again. He's in there another 10, 15, and all of a sudden, the song's about to end. He comes out, throws another song on and stuff, goes over to the bar, of comes course. back across from the bar, and he's like in this shit mood, and it's starting to get late now. Yeah. Now it's, hell, it's probably, mm, hitting midnight, I imagine. Because he, okay. ended, I knew he was going to be ending at one, so it was midnight. Because then it, at midnight, just before midnight, he come back out of the bar area, yeah, and goes right into the DJ area. And somebody wanted 
and this one person, pretty intoxicated, wanted to do karaoke. He was supposed to shut karaoke off at midnight. Yeah. But he went ahead and let the person do it and stuff. Next thing I know, I'm looking. He's doing lines on his DJ area. Oh, he thing. just said, fuck it. He he'd, What he'd done is the dude walked off and I guess had went to the bathroom. Yeah. Now, this is all aftermath that I know all this. At the time, I don't know this. He when i guess he went over there to talk with the guy maybe to buy some more off him or whatever the deal he made cut or whatever the situation was he wasn't there but the guy had left his little black pouch on the table oh no and he grabbed out somehow the black pouch now i'm not saying how much was in there whatever it was but it must not have been noticeable right away yeah so it must have been packets or whatever but he's doing lines on that table i'm like oh and then the shit hits the fan. It's like the dude that's doing the karaoke singing stops. You know, he's cool. He goes off, you know. Yeah. Him and his buddies and stuff like that. And then he gets on the microphone and goes into this tiring. Oh, on God. Somebody in there, I guess he had bumped into somebody earlier. They had words bumping it, you know, at physically bumped yeah. into each other and kind of had words or he thought they were rude or whatever but he goes into his tiring about rude people and all that this and that and i'm looking at my buddy like oh it, this is going south fast man what the hell are we gonna do you want to go and leave him hanging or you you going you think you can cool him out because i don't know the guy well enough to say shit yeah i'm i'm just observer actually i got my buddy's back about it all that is yeah next thing i know he goes over there, you know, because my buddy's a peacemaker for the most part and is pretty good at calming people down, especially if he's not in the condition that the person that's going off in, he's all mm -hmm. good, you know. And he's trying to cool him out and everything and, you know, like saying, man, you, you know, you got to be professional. This is not, what are you doing, you know, because he kind of put a button on and cut off the microphone and, the, and some music started playing. My butt what my buddy did and he's like man dude you you're, you're acting a goddamn fool and shit what the hell are you doing well they sh he shoves them like, you know says some words and y'all you don't fucking know what to push them so he just leaves it go whatever dude yeah let's just fuck and, this and stuff and by this point now closing time's coming yeah you know and he's supposed to be stopping and he's just he he decides to turn it into his personal party moment so next thing you know, you got music coming on there, and the music he's been playing's been catered to the audience, yeah. to who's there. Now he's playing stuff that it is has none of these people give a shit about, don't like, don't want to hear it. Yeah, it is to them extremely offensive and rude type yeah. of shit he's trying to play. And plus he plus he he had that drunk, uh, what I call drunk hearing, so he's turning the volume up on everything because oh, you know now he's making everything obscenely loud to the yeah and it's the just music these people just beating the shit out of these people poor you know and they're starting to leave and they're half intoxicated next thing i know he's out there getting crazy on the floor and then like he's jack you know pumping up the party a couple you know big old chickies that are way too much drunk they're they're yeah. falling in line with it but you know little things like that are going on until you offend somebody and i don't know what he said i wasn't near him when he said it because me and my buddy are just like debating on calling it tonight or not yet yeah the way it's starting to get so out of hand it's like the bartender said some things to him and he's just blowing it's like screw you this is my all going in one ear out the other it's his I'm, party this moment, is man. this is my house him. now yeah. yeah like he like he's you wouldn't have nobody ever want for me type attitude and this is my house. i'm like holy shit this guy's lost his damn mind and shit and the cops are gonna be coming oh lord yeah you know because she the bartender she's looking she's probably at that time in her probably 30s mid early to mid 30s at the best and, and and look like she just she's been around shit. she'd been around bar tending long enough that she don't want to see that kind yeah, of she's shit just done fed up with all of it she has family to go home to exactly wants to get home yeah Can't she do shit until this dumbass leaves basically yeah she was mm -hmm. the type that turned a blind eye to the customers 
things as long as it wasn't blatantly in front of her mm-hmm. to where that's where she don't got ask, the tips. don't tell type of person but yeah, once you get out of hand where, and start flaunting it then that's when we have yeah, a problem type yeah of if you're, you're gonna do sneak off and not cause an it, a scene or nothing you're cool you tip her well she leaves shit alone that type mm-hmm. of person she was getting to a point where she's fed up with him now oh, and he's acting full and finally my, my buddy's like screw this and shit we're gonna go and as soon as we get ready to go. This big old dude come barreling down the hall from the bathroom and just knocks into him. Doesn't punch him. He had his fist up like he was going to. But just like but then shoulder he checks just kind of railed, no, uh, like Mack trucked him. Oh. Just ran and had his arm up and then he just kind of kept it up even higher and kind of forced himself forward where his chest and upper body Barrel would be him, basically. yeah and he just railroaded into him and the dude wasn't prepared for the he was n- nowhere prepared for the, the the force coming behind this basically, guy so he went flying all backwards into his little dj area and stuff and bumped into it. didn't it really knock him much over he moved some things but that was about it yeah and he just all raging and i'm thinking i'm like you know screw this i'm done with this guy this is yeah. bullshit you know hey but you know tell my buddy we, we're done i'm going if you want to stay and help him i'm going to go ahead and go and shit and i'm like hell i'll walk i don't care and i just started walking out you know towards the front door to leave and everything and and i uh, hear this hear the dj screaming dj douchebag screaming at me where are you going man you're supposed to be open man and i'm thinking helping you what, I ain't helping you for nothing, dude. You're on your own. I'll like see I barely you. even know you. What do you mean, help you? Yeah, I'm going to see you on the flip side. I'm out of this place. I got to go, man. Mom yeah. said dinner's ready, and I don't want to make her mad. <laughs> and, and, yeah, my buddy decided he jumped out. He's He realized this is going bad and stuff. And it was no more than us. We pulled away, got in the car and pulled away from the curb, got to... It was maybe three buildings on that block, on that street, mm-hmm. and stop sign. And we, just as we hit that stop sign and got ready to turn, you could hear, I see uh, lights flashing in the distance, you yeah. know, reflecting off of trees and whatnot. And you could hear the sirens coming. They were coming for the bar. We left, and the police ended up showing up. And I do believe they did not arrest him. But they did uh, clear the bar out. I think it was more of close it down, get everybody out type than actual, he's being arrested for this and sh- they're being arrested for that type situation. Yeah. The lady's more like, just get them out of here. I'm sick and tired of seeing them. Yeah, you know, and mm-hmm. that was uh, and that was the kind of the theme for him in a way with his DJing, I guess, because um, he, he really didn't have a good reputation I don't even know if he still does or nothing like that, but yeah. he didn't have a good reputation with a lot of places. He burned he burned probably two or three bars up that would never call him again for a DJ. <laughs> never, because it's just I mean, shenanigans just... of not showing up or leaving early to mm-hmm. whatever's. I mean, he just... He was to his drunken wrong. coke parties that he likes to throw? He just, yeah, and he was such such a uh, arrogant type of person that he thought everybody loved him regardless and if you didn't you're a piece of shit that didn't know no better you were a hater if you didn't like yeah him, you know yeah and stuff and it's like and you see if you knew him and seen him you're looking at him going you're a poser uh, man who did, what, what kind of mom and dad or whatever kept coddling you and telling you could be anything and everything and you're the most beautiful person in the world and you're the greatest Went to his head you know you know what i mean yeah all this when you look in the mirror dude don't you see what it's we see self-centered narcissistic up? capabilities of the person at hand man well, yeah i mean you, you, you fucked up looking dude i don't know what to tell you <laughs> there's a reason why you're you're you know you got an ugly wife and, and shit the money was a the money wasn't wasn't the reason why you married the money the money was a perk you were marrying her because you know there was nobody else out there stupid enough to take the ass you know that that type of person yeah. lives lives in a non-reality is what i consider yeah. you know and whether they still 
doing the DJ thing or not. God, I hope not. <laughs> Just from that story, I hope not. No, I, I'm telling you, there's... I don't know if yeah. I'd ever have an event that would require a DJ, but if I would, not him. Yeah, yeah I, see, now that I don't have no no knowledge if, if he did. like. Uh, now, I'm sure he, he was available for weddings or whatnot. Yeah. Whether he did some and they fell apart or it went good or whatever, I wouldn't know on that one. You know. Yeah. But uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll take a small commercial break and... After the commercial, we'll have this second story. All righty. Welcome back. We're going to talk a little bit more about DJ Douchebag, and then we're going to segue into our own personal bar stories. Dad, you can kick it off whenever you feel like it. Okay. Um, like, with the du- DJ Douchebag, like, anytime he would come over... Like, I'd be with my buddy at his house. He had gotten a pull-up or something. He'd come over to talk with us and visit while I'd be out there. Yeah. This kind of thing at the time. He'd all, knowing that we didn't go to the gig or nothing he, that he had played at if he had a gig or whatever, he would, it would never fail. He'd come and talk like it was the greatest thing, like like it was a concert almost. You know, yeah. like, like thousands of people in there, you know. He, and stuff, and you you could tell at a point. Okay, this he's full of shit. Because mm-hmm. then, because he does, doesn't name the bar off at first. He won't tell you the name of the bar or where he was at. He's just like, yeah, the the place I was DJ. It was like you know thousands of people there. It's like just massive crowds or hundreds. Sometimes yeah. he'd go hundreds to when he when he give them that look like yeah you're bullshitting. He was like all right man maybe not <laughs> thousands but it was definitely hundreds bro definitely yeah. hundreds. And then, you know hey man and, and they're jumping around and the the they're singing man I think I I think I may even start a uh a, a, a music uh, company of producing singers and stuff you know and tie that into my DJ business we're all me, me and my buddy are like well, okay whatever you know okay you know yeah, when, pig, when pigs fly bro yeah Definitely. yeah people can sing i get it you know there is some cool singers out there especially knowing you and you're probably half in the bag i'm sure they sounded really good to you <laughs> oh definitely <laughs> almost like tone you know, deaf motherfucker exactly <laughs> but uh you know he, he would the he the the stories he'd tell you though is how he free drinks and and like he was a, a rapper basically and basically everybody, like the czar of the fucking yeah, palace or and, something and everybody like loved that. him and all this and shit and you'd hear rumors because uh you know me and my buddy did run run bars back in the day you yeah. know we make rounds we knew people at places meet up with him we you would hear stories like he, he, a lot of times how we knew his a lot of his oh my god the greatest bar you know dj night ever but shit yeah was the way we'd find out is like you know if we happen to go to the bar and we get lucky and we'd ask the bartender hey uh, have you ever you had uh how would you think of like dj douchebag how did he work out for you were you on that night yeah that motherfucker <laughs> god you know Always. and then the, the the story he tells you about that place you're all of a sudden you're looking you're like this this motherfucker lying he, through his he, teeth he, he he went from the world's greatest nobody can beat him the story comes out this motherfucker ended up being the the uncle bob drunk guy fucking being chased out of town with pitch stammering and stuttering on this microphone incoherently playing fucking up dj now you know how you mess up you know playing a record but you know, yeah you know or something like that or uh, complete asshole nobody liked him shit like that you know mm-hmm. and here he is acting like they love them and in the bartender what you know depending on the bartender like a young nice looking one oh she want to go home with me and you're you go there and she like, he was such a douchebag coming up I'm like well, i don't want to go home with him dj douchebag <laughs> Yeah, you know. DJ Diddle's more like it. Yeah, you know, and it, that's that's the type of g- guy he was and stuff. I'm glad. I, I, my friend, I, I don't think he really talks to him anymore. Or not. I'm not sure, but I have nothing to do with the man, so I yeah. couldn't say nothing and stuff. But uh, that, that really, you can find it. Even, you don't have to be a DJ to have people that will give you the, the 
for whatever reason, the bullshit bar story. Oh, definitely. Always. All the time. <laughs> uh, my buddy actually likes to do it quite often. He'll go... Uh, right, like right before he got with his current girlfriend, he always try to pick up chicks at a bar, and <laughs> like he'd he'd always strike out, always strike out, never get with anybody. Be like, yeah, man, gave my number out to four chicks. They're definitely gonna call back. Uh, <laughs> spent all my money on this one girl that night at the bar, man. It was lit. In reality, he sat there in the corner alone. <laughs> Oggling the girls, but just that's it. Just ogling the girls. The fantasy. Yeah. Fantasy. You know. You know. You know yeah, yeah. Well, you figure. How how long did he uh, spin in the corner? Uh, he never left the corner. He, no, no. I mean the night. So you. Yeah, figure, the entire night. Wait, what? Four, three, four hours are at the bar. I don't know how long they spin at the bar, but uh, you figure. What is it? Maybe three. We'll say three or four hours. Something three or four like hours. That. Oogling the girls, so you figure that's that's a good 20, 25 minutes to thirty minutes of fantasy time he's putting on each oh, one. Definitely. You know, that's a, that's that's close to stalker value there, <laughs> almost. But <laughs> <laughs> I have a band. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he he doesn't do it anymore. Thank God. And I I don't I refuse to go to bars with him though. Like, but he it, just like he liked to turn his reality into the, the fantasy. biggest fantasy ever. And I'm already knowing in my head that the story's completely bullshit. But I can't go out and tell him. I can't break his little heart. You know what I mean? Oh, like you yeah. definitely did, buddy. Good for you. All them women would be lucky to have you. They're definitely gonna call. They're not gonna call. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in my time we had a. A buddy, I in our when I was in my mid mid twenties, I guess he no. always talked a big game about how much alcohol he could hold, which we knew that was a lot of bullshit with him mm -hmm. and stuff. And uh, he, but he brag about how at the bar nobody would ever mess with him and how tough he is, and he walks in commands immediate respect, yeah. this and that and stuff. And we're I. I'm like, you know, to me, I'm like, whatever, okay, so you make a big ass out of yourself at the bar, so everybody knows who you are. Okay, I get it. So you think you're cheers here, you, except for being Norm, you're called fucking dumbass. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dumbass. <laughs> Walking in, oh, loud and shit like that. And then you go there, you know, you go with them to a bar. Don't have to be that bar, nothing. Mm -hmm. Then you go out with them one night to a bar, and they start doing their little acting shit. Next thing you know, they're 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 screaming for help because they're being dragged down the damn bar aisle, getting their ass kicked because they ran their mouth to the wrong person and didn't want to take it. And it's not a big person. Yeah, doing it, you know, it could be a, a small guy or even a medium girl beating us crap out of me you're just like well what well, happened what happened to everybody what happened to the big the game bro where, where was the big game where's <laughs> yeah. the big game ain't the big game gonna help you out you know the big game is he out back is he smoking a cigarette does he is, does, does he not know your ass in trouble <laughs> <laughs> Do you need me to go get the big game for you to come yeah, help you? It, it's it's like it's like uh, one of my buddies would say. I guess his nuts for God <laughs> was in the bathroom when he got home, got up into this fight, man, yeah. or he left him at home. Shit, he ain't tough worth nothing. Yeah, there, I knew a lot of guys that would claim they're tough and everything like that, and and you find you'd find out in a bar. He wouldn't even go to blows, and they'd be, uh, I guess what you guys would consider punked out or scared out. Yeah. You know? and they'd, okay, no, no, no. They'd be I, the I'm, pussy in the corner, basically. Yeah. Um, I actually had this one friend, not really a friend. Uh, I wouldn't even put it like that. He never knew when to not get into a fight. He could not fight, but he thought he could, especially when he was drunk. But the the biggest thing is, is he was a coke fiend, so like that was his main choice. He's let me go do a rail, and then let me do 17 shots. Then let me go do some more rails, and let me do 17 shots. And I think I went to a bar once with uh, it, it was him. He was just with us, and then uh, my buddy, and then another friend. Okay. And uh, there was a fight that happened in the bar. We were just sitting at the uh, at the uh, booth and whatnot. And a fight happened out in the back, and he was already just extremely fucked up. The uh, uh, the guy, the coke fiend, he was just already fucked up as before we got there. And, oh um, lord! 
He j this and the fight broke out just as he was getting back from the bathroom. So so you can gather what he was doing in there. And um a fight breaks out and a dude gets launched like over a few tables and the dude and the, and the buddy and the guy's like I'm going to go help this guy. He's like I'm going to go fight. I'm going to be a hero. I'm going to go help him. Aww. And jumps out of the booth and I'm like I ain't helping. <laughs> and just gets his ass handed to him and he just charged in thinking he could fight thinking he could do all this and it's because the drugs were talking and he's just over there w w trying to wail on this guy that threw the other guy over the, th the table okay. and the guy's basically just holding his you, head as he's coming you, at like a t like you would a child trying to fight you yeah you, but you know what he's got his tunnel vision the drugs are not cool, obviously yeah and, but it, it's tunnel vision he don't know what the hell's going on around him. he's rushing in thinking He's, He's like, gonna, I got he, this. I'm a superhero. Yeah, and literally has no plan because he ain't thinking. Nope, He's just is, rushing in. I've watched that reasons. happen at the bar many a time. I seen a dude getting, he was getting mouthy, and he kept bumping up towards another guy in the bar. You know, just getting mouthy, getting mouthy. Had too much to drink, obviously. And the guy finally just pushed him back, and he didn't shove him, like, really, really hard, like, yeah. bad. He just pushed him back. Enough to, you know, hey, enough's back enough up. with you bumping into me. Yeah. And he stumbles back a couple feet, falls down to his butt, you know, just flops down, gets mad as hell, jumps up, pushes himself up, and takes off running head first, puts his head down, and is running like a bull at him. Yeah. Basically just running at this guy. He just turns to the side. The guy keeps running right into the damn... Uh, doorway of, of the bar of course what, was it a glass door too no 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 it, the wooden the wood part around oh, okay where the door is you know just, just conks near himself the, out the basically door. yeah he just hit his head into that falls down crumbles to the ground oh. yeah and he got it he got arrested and everything and they called the cops had him picked I would up but, too. It, but you know you see shit like that it's always seems like it's always in small town bars that you get the yahoos that come from other small towns yeah. to a different small town mm -hmm. bar. I've already been kicked out of every bar where I live. I'm going to go and get kicked out of the other bars where I don't live. <laughs> oh, it's always like that. And then and then they, you know, a lot of times they'll, they'll try to pull that, sell, sell drugs to people that ain't real drugs. Yeah. Oh, man. I've seen that go south a couple times at, at some of the bars around town where the person... They think the person's going to get it and go somewhere else and do it. Mm -hmm. And they don't know the bar, obviously. This person right there, I've seen where a person just throws it right there on the bar and does their line real quick. And all of a sudden, they're grabbing a bottle, reaching over, getting the bigger bottles or something heavier to hit this dude or whoever with and beat him up right there in the bar. Yeah. And stuff. And I, you know, it's, it's like... You know, you came somewhere you didn't know, and now you're getting your ass kicked for selling bunk shit. What did you expect? Yeah, you know, and... and like, that one's that, on you, bud. Yeah, you know, it's like... You Not see our this problem. Stuff, it's like, it, it just boggles the mind is, how, why do you people live like that? That mm. is amazing to me how you can just be douchebags like that and want to live instead of getting a job and everything like that. Yeah. You know, but like they say, you know, there's a need... I don't know if the bars are like that now. I ain't been in a bar in probably ten years, but mm -hmm. you know, some of the some of the stories I've heard from other people that do DJ and whatnot. Yeah, they said them bars are getting out of hand sometimes. For the most part, they really are. I don't like going in them either. For the most part, I hate it. There's and I also I don't like drinking either. I'd rather get stoned. So it's I, in my eye, there's really no reason for me to be there. But. Everyone just likes to run their mouths at bars, and it, it also it seems to be just filled with the younger generation. And I don't like the younger generation's music, and that's all that plays in them bars nowadays. And it's I just can't stand it. It's it's oh, not yeah. a, it's not a place for me. That 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 could be. I've I've DJs at at places can be the the best. Keep it cool. Or be the worst nightmare mm -hmm. in a bar as far as not their actions, but way they're setting music up and whatnot, oh, yeah. and the way they're hyping the crowd and the way they go at things with the crowd. 
I've seen places in this. Hell, this price back in 2008, 2009, maybe, mm -hmm. or 10 at the latest. There was a bar that opened up and they catered to rap music and stuff like that. Yeah. And they would, you know, have showcases, open mic nights, things like that and stuff. And the crowd it drew wasn't like the hip hop crowd, like what they're one. It yeah. was it was pulling in like your gang banging type style. You know, I'm not saying they're gang bangers, but the the type of that style of people just all they're not really there to rap or nothing. They like the music. Mm -hmm. They're there to thug up and pose and tough guys and you know what I mean. Yeah, it's an act to a point. But at a point when I calls involved, somebody's gonna push and somebody's gonna shove. Yeah. You know, you know. Yeah, I mean, mean, it's inevitable. It's always gonna. Yeah, happen. and and it seemed like that place they would get get these 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 songs going and people get all start getting worked up and worked up and stuff. And it was it was getting to a point where more than not, it was on weekends that they would end up having cops showing up mm -hmm. every weekend at various different times of an evening. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, you know, not always at closing time or whatever. It was various times of the night, really, in that place. Almost for every week and for a little, for like four or five months. And then finally, it started happening during the week. They started sh having to show up. And when that happened, it wasn't much longer. And that place was done. Yeah, they, yeah. they finally pulled, pulled it, found something they shouldn't have been doing in it. Mm -hmm. Whatever. They had a reason. And they shut it down and stuff thank god because it was getting to be a, a problem and stuff you started people's cars were getting broke into and things like that around the area and stuff yeah. it was starting to become a problem and the way i had seen it coming from the 90s and everything it was like you guys are, are you guys are posers you're pretending of an era that you know you don't live in it in mm -hmm. the area they're talking about because it these songs are very explicit about where they're at. They're yeah. not talking in general terms. They're mm -hmm. telling you this town, this street, this what's, right? Yeah. Back in the day, especially in repping and whatever they called it. And you'd have these fools here. And this be in 2010 or so. With 90s music that was real popular. Dr. Dre's and whatnots and stuff like that. Yeah. And thinking that they're gangster and all this pretending i'm just like oh my god how long is this place gonna last <laughs> i just want every bar to play slayer or pants just every bar oh no i couldn't go in a bar to play that <laughs> I, I i i could i bars are okay if they're if it's a bar and grill i'll go in it and have the food and go yeah but to actually go and hang out with some friends or something in the bar no not no, no more no. there's not me enough either. entertainment in them or anything like that for me because yeah. you know i haven't drank in a very very long time you know until so. they make like a cannabis lounge <laughs> i don't think i'm going out to like bars because mm. a cannabis lounge wouldn't be that bad I, no, yeah I well, especially if they had a license to sell there too where you can just you know buy your weed at the cannabis lounge and just smoke it there that'd be pretty cool that may be something for you to look into then yeah start you a little business there make some money you got any more good bar stories i don't think so okay well most most of mine are kind of repetitious scene and a lot of them i patronized that folks did the same damn thing yeah <laughs> so with uh with that we'll call this a episode and thank you for listening Thanks for listening to Dad and Son on the Coffee Bar Stories. Please join us each week for new stories. All music in today's episode was brought to you by Kevin McLeod.